this, I want to make a quick video on how to overlay gauges on top of your DJI Phantom videos. Um, there's been a lot of videos out there on people doing this. There's been a couple of how to's, but it seems like the links and uh, they're a little outdated. So what I've done is created a quick video here to show everyone how to quickly get Dashware installed, get the flight record imported, and go ahead and get gauges overlaid on top of your video. Um, this is really quick, um, it's really easy to do, so I want to show you guys how to do this. Um, first thing I want to do is open a browser. You're going to want to go to this location right here. Go to dashware.net. So put this into your browser, click on download, and go ahead and download the application. Now you need to accept the uh, license agreements here. Click on download. And once it's downloaded, go ahead and run it. It'll install, and you'll simply have dashware installed on your computer. So you need two things to make this work. You need the video, of course, that you've recorded from your Phantom, and you also need the flight record. Um, this is the data that is recorded when you fly that gives you all the t uh, telemetry information, your altitude, your, um, your height, your heading direction, your GPS locations, um, your vertical horizontal speed, your ground speed, um, pretty much everything, your voltage. So this is going to take all the information and put it into a format that Dashware can read. Now you have to do that by going to a website and converting it, but first let me show you how to get this flight record off. So what you need to do is go ahead and plug in the device that you've plugged into your receiver that you're using the DJI Pilot app on. So whether that's your Android or your iPhone, plug it into your computer via USB of course, navigate to it. So you want to open it up. In this case, I've got my Nexus 7 plugged in. So open up your Nexus or whatever device you have. DJI folder. Open up the DJI Pilot app. Go to your flight record folder. And this is your flight record data. So match the time up. You know, you can actually add, if you wanted to, a, uh, a column to show, the, to show the date modified. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and create, add the modified date and sort it here. Okay, so now this is here and I know that, that the flight that I want to add is this guy right here. I flew it on 8-1 at 7.09 p.m. This is gonna to correspond to the video that we're going to go ahead and upload in Dashware. So take this, copy to the desktop. I think I've already done it. So here it is. So now I've got Dashware and I've got the flight record data that I need. Next thing you want to do is open up a website called uh, flylitchy.com slash logs and that's F-L-Y-L-I-T-C-H-I dot com slash logs. So this is going to convert your log file into a format that Dashware can read. In this case, it's a Flytrex uh, format. So go ahead and click on browse. We'll browse to this file. So I know it's on the desktop. There it is. That's it. We'll click on it, hit open, convert it. Once you go and convert, the website is actually doing the conversion for you. You have an option to open to save it. We want to definitely save it. We'll save it somewhere we know we can get to it later. I've got a location for my Phantom Flights. I believe this is all the same. I've already exported it, but either way, either way, this is how you do it. So we'll go ahead and replace it. That's fine. Okay, so the file's been saved to the location I know of now. Let's go back to our desktop. We can open up Dashware. All right, the first thing you need to do is choose the video. So it opens up instantly with a quick little project wizard and says, okay, find me video, name your project, and we'll upload the data files next. So go ahead and click on the video. This is straight off the uh, SD card that was in my Phantom. So I know that this is the video right here that I want to use. And it copies the video over into a temporary location that they can use. So we'll wait for this to happen. Okay, so you see the video's uploaded. All right, so here's our video. We can just play it if we wanted to. So now the next thing you wanna do, it's under the project, this is where it, this is where it puts you by default, but go ahead and click on the data files. 
go on add here the plus sign and now we're going to choose the file that we had converted in this case I know where I saved it I put it under videos Phantom 3P flight logs and this guy right here so this has a timestamp I want we'll open it now this is where this is important you want to change the data profile to Flytrex this is the format that the website converted it to so this is a Flytrex format we'll click on add alright now instantly you'll notice that the location GPS location has been mapped now I'm not going to use any of this um, I'm going to make my own so let's go ahead and clear it out I'll show you how to make a custom one alright go ahead and click on gauge toolbox and you'll see you have a whole list of gauges here you can choose from I'm going to show you the ones I personally use the ones I like it's the ribbons alright UAV tape okay so this is our altimeters so this is our altitude alright you just click and drag over by the way if you double click on it it brings up the properties you can edit the gauge okay we're going to add distance from takeoff and let's add speed so this will show us how fast the phantom is going we'll put it over here to the right alright so now if you want to add something else like a compass so there is a compass in here in fact if you can't find it right off the bat you can simply go up here and do a filter and just type compass there it is we'll drag this over make it a little smaller so you can do this however you want obviously this is completely customizable and we definitely want a map up here so we want to see the uh, the map the one I use you can use any ones you want there's a few of them I like the uh, yellow heading map because it's easy to read easy to see I'll move this up here gives us an idea of the direction okay so now we got some data we have some gauges on on our video um, you need to synchronize it so I started recording at a hover um, a few minutes maybe even a, I don't know, a few seconds after takeoff so it starts recording flight data the second you take off um, so you could take off fly around and then maybe hit the record button start recording video and your data is going to be off so you need to synchronize it the easiest way I found to do this is to locate a spot on the map where the quad has changed um, changed direction or started moving or even increased some sort of height somewhere on the map that you can relate to visually um, we'll click on synchronization up here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about let's zoom in a little bit go ahead and uncheck sync with video this allows you to adjust the synchronization let's click on play on the video so you can see at this point in my video I'm just sitting at a hover um, and it's actually playing and then right here I begin moving forward so at this point I probably could synchronize forward movement I'm gonna try something a little bit more drastic something a little bit more noticeable in this case it's gonna be maybe this hard turn here at the bottom so what I want to do is rotate the video and I know physically where my phantom was on the map I know that when I brought it all the way out here this is at my furthest point and I know that I made a slight left turn and started heading towards these houses and at that point I know that this is going to be that almost 30 degree angle here so let's go ahead and find this alright so right here you can see the phantom start to turn I'll slow it down okay right there Okay, back it up a little bit okay I'll stop it right before the turn now let's go ahead and match that so you see the dot starts moving this is going to show the location of obviously I'm going to bring it out to the turn I know I'm about to turn in fact I've already turned right here so this is the point where I started to turn the quad so I want to go ahead and re-click sync with video and hit play and see how it matches up okay this is off because 
I've already started moving forward uh, before I started moving forward in the video so let's back it up again okay so I'll bring it right to the turn again you can look at the arrow also up at the top right you can see the quad is pointing forward I want to make sure that right here it starts turning and you can see it is so let's it actually looks like it may be pretty close because it's starting to turn at the same time I'm I'm scrolling let me go ahead and unsync video yep so see as I slide the slider here you'll notice that up here on the uh, the yellow map the direction of the quad start moving itself so I haven't quite started turning so if we point it back straight okay it starts turning there go back a little bit then on the video I'll make sure that this is where I start to turn it is so it looks like it may be pretty close I want to go ahead and re-click sync and let's watch it okay so I'm turning and the quad just turns so it's a little bit off in fact right here I start moving forward so let's go ahead and unsync the video wait till I get forward movement at the 30 degree turn okay it's right here you can do this all day long okay I'm moving forward okay we got the uh, synchronization red dot over here and up here is moving forward as well now let's just watch it. Let's see how close we are because we'll be able to see whether or not the uh, the uh, position of the quad starts turning at the same time. Okay, so obviously I started turning on the video before before I started turning on the uh, the actual map. So we're still off a little bit. Let's go ahead and get this back down to right there is where I start turning okay if there's forward movement and then there is slight moving at 213 almost 214 so right here 214 I start making a left bank so let's put it at 214 you notice that I am over here back on the synchronization it's off so let's uncheck sync with video move the slider up okay and right here I am starting to turn the quad alright resync and play okay so I'm turning and so is the synchronization it's turning as well so as soon as I start moving forward it should definitely sync with the map as well up here up top you should be able to see okay this is good I started to pan back towards the houses look down this is my neighborhood by the way figure why I'm here I might as well get a better look at my house okay that was fun over it let's fly back to the school and I'm moving forward alright and then you'll notice the red dot is moving forward as well this looks like it's it's pretty well in sync Okay, so this is full speed. Looks like I'm going about 27 miles an hour, almost 400 feet up. Obviously, the distance from takeoff is decreasing because I'm heading back towards myself. And I'm going to fly over the school. I go over this little area over here with the uh, pond and uh, make a turn, start heading back. So we can skip the video through here. This, notice any any major changes let's go through this loop-de-loop -loop and we'll see how synchronized this is and again you can see the red dot over here all right so you can see I'm start panning to the right looks like it's very well in sync with the map so this looks like it's it's really well in sync I think we're good Okay, around the curve, and we're heading back towards the field to land. All right, so then we'll skip. 
little bit further here and when I start to descend so here I'm looking down you can notice that the uh, spot on the map is stopped same location I took off and you should start seeing the uh, feet descending so we are we're seeing it go down so this is this is very well synchronized so once you know you're synchronized you're ready to make a video and again you could place any of these you want in fact I even create a custom overlay. I can show you guys how to do that real quick. You can go to a gauge. Go to your gauge toolbox. Click on plus to add. Um, it says gauge name. You can name anything you want. Say custom. Okay, and click enter. It's going to say, okay, what kind of gauge do you want to add? What component do you want to add? So this since it's just an image, we want to create a custom image. So add, hit the plus sign of components. Let's go ahead and add an image. Now the image is here. You want to click on the image itself and edit it to actually put an image file in place. So let's do that. We're going to go ahead and click on browse for image file. And go to my pictures. All right, so here's one that I created. This is my logo of my son. Okay, the image is obviously way off. Let's go ahead and shrink it to 150 by 150. So go ahead and change the width and height to something that fits quite better. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, if you go ahead and click on auto fit, it'll shrink the outside to it. Okay, and that's really it. So now we have a, uh, a gauge saved that's custom. We should be able to just add it right onto the screen. Okay, once you've added the custom gauge, just scroll down, you should see it in your gauge toolbox. Here it is, it's custom, we'll drag it over. There's the custom overlay that we wanted. And that is it. Um, once done, just go to your file, create video. This lets you export the data and the video into a file, and you can name it whatever you want. Put it wherever you want. Click on Create. It's going to show you the width and height. This is a 1080 video at almost 50 frames a second. And there you have it. There is your custom gauge overlay. And again, you can go as customized as you want. Now that we have the data here, you can put any gauge you want. Um, so you don't want that. You can add altimeter. You can add miles per hour. If you want to go with this look, you can. You can go to your descent rate, whatever. So, So this is completely customizable and um, anyways, have fun, it's that easy.